Merry Christmas everyone. I do hope that Santa bought you everything that you wish for. He certainly did for me because Level Earth Observer is trying to debunk Brian Cox. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday, special Christmas Day edition with me, Simon Dan. Thank you very much for joining me. Before we begin today, a quick thank you to the sponsors of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. Encrypting all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensuring that your IP address remains hidden to make sure no one can see what you do online. On top of that, they block ads, trackers, malware, and phishing attempts, and unlike other VPN services, you can use it on as many devices as you'd like simultaneously. I personally spend about six to eight hours a day online, which is an incredible amount of time. The internet knows a hell of a lot about you, which is why you should care about your online data. And Surfshark can protect you against online targeted advertising. Have you ever seen an ad or banner which made you think, oh, someone's listening to my conversations or even reading my mind? This is how your online data is being used against you and you can use Surfshark to protect yourselves from this sort of online targeted advertising. Click on the link in the description to get a limited time holiday offer of a massive 84% off and an extra four months free after that. Just go to surfshark.deal slash simandan and use my code simandan to take advantage of this great deal. Also, as with last Christmas, every single penny that is made through advertising in this video will go to a charity. This year I've chosen Mind, which is a mental health charity. Right, back to today's video where old channel foe Level Earth Observer has taken it upon himself to try and debunk Brian Cox. What a Christmas present this is going to be. Brian Cox reveals why the earth is round this morning, which is a terrible British breakfast TV program. Highly recommend you don't watch it. You'll end up front kicking your TV into oblivion. Trust me, don't watch it. Unless you want to destroy that TV, which isn't a bad idea, to be honest. Not watching it, though, would mean you'd fail to see all of the good, the actual good that this show does for people. Not cool, Elio. Not cool. But let's, let's have a look what Brian's got, what he's bringing to the table. Is he going to shut the flat earth down with some real science? Obviously, they're bringing out all the top guns. We saw the Globe Perth conference the other day when they brought in the big guns. Now we're getting the big guns up here on TV. Should we be worried? Let's have a look. You should be petrified, buddy. Forces of nature. Yeah. So, so in what areas? What are you looking at? Well, the, the idea is that if you look at the, the world that we see... So, so you know, the green leaves, the blue sky, spherical planets. Hang on, Brian, I've got to stop you there pretty much immediately. Of course he does. I wonder why. I do lots of observations, my dear man. I've never seen spherical planets. I've got a powerful camera and a half-decent telescope, but I've never seen spherical planets. That's really weird, because I've got a telescope too, and I've seen spherical planets, and a fair few of them. I see lights in the sky that do not match the images produced by the mainstream science and NASA, space agencies like NASA. It don't match. NASA has a huge telescope in orbit around the Earth. Your telescope, by comparison, is not going to produce the same image, is it? So we've got a problem there, Brian. You're pushing something that doesn't match observable reality. Already, I'm going to call you out on that, Brian, all right? You're making a bullshit assumption based purely on your heliocentric fetish for balls flying through vacuums. Fetish? That's a very choice word there, level Earth observer. You could say that you've got a fetish about us flat Earth debunkers, couldn't you? Sorry, Brian, that's not good enough. You're supposed to be proving the Earth is round here through science. You are a professor, after all, are you not? Or are you just a moronic failed keyboard player who's got a touch of the mannequin about him, who's just parroting utter f***ing nonsense for a half-decent wage? Oh, a touch of the green-eyed dragon coming through there, Level Earth Observer. You know what they say about the seven sins and all that, don't you? I don't know, let's have a look. We'll, we'll work out what you are. All those things are telling you something about the deeper 
structure that underlies nature. So even life. So next week's is about the origin of life. So it's, it's how did... That should be interesting, shouldn't it? I wonder if that'll be based on a story. And layered of stories, layers of story upon story upon story. I'm wondering if there'll be some presentations in CGI, Brian. Mmm, let me think. This really isn't the debunking I was hoping for, matey. Your personal incredulity is running the show here, it seems. We, you know, we feel living is a, is a very special thing. But it's a property of matter, of this stuff. You know, the, 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 the Earth was once just a dead world when it formed, you know, four and a half billion years ago. And at some point, that matter came along. Can you prove anything you've just, just said there? Yes. No, of course you can. You're saying it in such a matter-of-fact manner. You've got absolutely no evidence to back that claim. There is irrefutable evidence to back that claim, Level Earth Observer. You would have to sift through every single scientific paper ever written regarding the age of the Earth to be able to claim that there's no evidence. Have you done that? Brian, you're a moron, mate. The irony. Oh. And you go to some really fl far-flung destinations, and as you can see there from that tiny bit that we showed, I mean, it's beautiful. Like, it's beautifully shot, and you see some incredible things that you wouldn't necessarily have to get, get to see. Yeah, I think that, that was the idea, to send film crews out, and it's sort of the way, you mentioned David Attenborough earlier, the way that his pro... I thought you were proving the ridiculous re pantomime theory that we live on a cannonball flying through a vacuum. All you've done so far is tickle your own undercarriage. Get on with it, Brian. This is a promo for his TV programme, which was new at the time, Forces of Nature. He's not gone on this specifically to prove the globe. That's work where a film crew can go and for, for months even film something spectacular. And we saw that wave on that clip through the Amazon. Yeah. So the wonderful, incredible tidal wave that goes up the river. And you see in, in the film that someone spends their life surfing it. So this kind of, his whole thing is to wait for this wave and surf into the... What the f***'s this got to do with living on a cannibal flying through a vacuum, Brian? Jungle of the Amazon. How often does it come along? It's, uh, it's, it comes when, when the moon and the sun are alive. So I think it's about once every couple of months or something right. like that. The, the, the Para Rocca, it's called. Interesting that Elio has nothing to say about that. Hilarious, isn't it? A phenomenon that happens only because the sun and the moon are aligned, which Elio has no other explanation for, so he stays silent. And you know how I know that he's been shown up here. Watch this. Well, you're, you're not, because they go out and they f sit for months waiting for something to happen. Okay. <laughs> Brilliant. Wounded. Uh, the right thing to happen. You're, you're not there all the time. You're in. I saw Philip a few months back on the street. What a sketchy character he is. I won't say where it was, but he was dead sketchy. I mean, he does believe he's living on a ball flying through a vacuum, so I suppose you would be sketchy. What does having a pop at Philip Schofield have to do with the shape of the earth? Come on, buddy. It's one less on you. Yeah, I mean, that, that, that was the idea, to film these beautiful things. So you can't, if I'm there, it's kind of, you can't spend all that time. We had different crews out at di the same time filming things. And then the idea was to try and stitch it together. Essentially, you, you ask the question, what is it, what's the biggest, the tallest mountain you could make on a planet like the Earth? What, what sets that? So you've got the Earth's gravity, which depends on... And so we've got the Earth's gravitational theory, okay, so we're getting into the realms of storytelling here, even though we're supposed to be proving the Earth is round, okay. It's mass, really, how much yeah. stuff is in the Earth, it's pulling it down, pulling it down. So you can imagine there's a force. So we have to imagine there's a force, okay, this is getting really scientific now. It's on the ground. And, and the bigger you build the thing, the more the force is. The and bigger you... that we build the thing, the more imaginary force we need to apply. Is that right, Brian? Okay, I got it, I got it. Why are you mocking that? The larger and heavier that something is, the harder it is to pick up. That's demonstrable reality, as you call it. You can work out, well, how, what, what is it when that force overwhelms the strength of the rock and it starts to sink? Your it's actually on Earth, the, the mountain Mauna Kea which is one of the Hawaiian volcanoes. It's actually taller than Everest, if you measure from the surface of the seafloor. And that's sinking. So that's as tall the as it can get. mountain's sinking. Yeah, so, so it's too so heavy. So that is as tall so, as they go, yeah. they could go here. So if you've got a big enough planet with enough gravity, essentially, then, then anything that gets too big will sink. And, and So this moron is claiming the mountain, or volcano, or whatever it is in Hawaii, is being sucked 
to the centre of an imaginary ball. <laughs> That's not what he said. Where's your evidence, Brian? I thought we were proving a globe. Gravity just works in it. It doesn't care which angle so you're at. So it pushes it back. It's into a circle, into a sphere, if it's big enough. And then you look out into the solar system, the little moons, about less than about 150 miles across or something like that, have not got enough gravity, so they're all misshapen. It's called the potato radius. Look at the state of him. Now, in the 70s, there was a game, a kid's toy, called Mr. Potato. Yes, I think we all know that one. There's a touch of the Mr. Potato about our Mr. Brian Cox here. There's also a slight twist of mannequin. I'd probably better leave it there. I don't want to get too brutal on our friend here. So you get That's potato shape. I can say that one. <laughs> with the potato radius. So, so with the... I, I should add, I originally thought this guy was a lying deceiver. He, he's not. He's just a deluded moron who believes his own hype. Oh, I guess that's an upgrade then. The perfect person to control. Stupid and egotistical. Perfect. That's why he's here. But it's so obvious what these clowns are about. It would seem now we're about to get to the scientific stuff for the globe. Thank goodness for that, because all we've had so far is waffle. Oh, yeah. So, well, well the way that I demonstrated it, you just wanted to get messy, yeah, yeah, don't you? So the way that we demonstrated it in the, in the programme is to say, so what am I doing? If I want to make that into a ball, then I have to apply enough force to overcome the... If I don't apply enough force... Right, so... I'm struggling to... Understand the concept of gravity, understand the concept of science, understand the concept of anything. See where a moronic halfwit ex-keyboard player fits into the heliocentric model. Are you claiming the globe's wet sand and that you're God? He's actually messing around, isn't he? Surely this is banter. Where's it, what does, how does this demonstration back anything other than your stupidity, Brian? then it'll stay like some sort of mistake, you know, potato shape. So that's what gravity is doing, really. It's acting as a, as a force that's... So a theory is doing that. OK, OK, this is real scientific. It's not Brian's fault that you don't understand the concept of a force, Elio. Squashing it down and, and, and it'll turn it into a sphere because it acts the same in every direction. Hello, YouTube. For more... Oh, hang on, that, that was it. So, just to recap, we've had Brian Waffle on for two or three minutes about a guy surfing up a river, telling a few stories, a mountain being sucked to the bottom of the oceans because of gravity, to the centre of the glo supposed globe earth. We've been told we've got to um, use our imagination to imagine things being sucked and pulled to a ball. And then we got to see Brian squash some wet sand in his hand. And that there, ladies and gentlemen, is the globe proof that's supposed to debunk observable reality. All known practical demonstrations. All you have done in this video is expose your colossal misunderstanding of physics. I'm fairly confident, nay, sure, that Brian is not very worried about your scathing response here, Level Earth Observer. Well, there we go. That was painful, wasn't it? I was hoping that you at least put up a fight against Brian, but what can you do? Thank you all very much for watching today. I do hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please do like the video and subscribe as well. Just enough time to once again thank Surfshark for sponsoring today. Remember, surfshark.deal slash Simandan to get 84% off and a massive four months free after that. I have been Simandan. Enjoy the rest of your Christmas and I'll see you on Tuesday for more tinfoil fun. See you then, and Merry Christmas.